all of the um, associativity is maintained when you bring in one of these files. So it's still linked back to that NX file. And I'm gonna show you how we can pull in the NX file into Solid Edge, um, review it, make some Solid Edge um, and handle changes and in, in view modifications to it. Then go back into the NX file and change it and then we'll see how the changes are impact back into Solid Edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, demo that real quick and forgive me, I'm gonna try to, we didn't have a microphone stand, so I'm gonna try to demo this with one hand. So, uh, so I've got this uh, kind of generic uh, fixture, if you will, uh, assembly file open. And I'm working on a project where I've got this, this is gonna be a display fixture. So we're working with a customer and they have this really cool cam uh, that I wanna display. So I'm kinda, I gotta work in my solid edge but I know that the, the guy that I'm working with, he's in NX, he's got this NX file. I want to be able to bring it in and utilize it in Solid Edge. And again, if you've ever done, have gone through the migration process of pulling in uh, external files, you know it, it does take a little bit of time. Uh, so I want you to kind of see how quickly this is. So again, if I just go to my home tab here, um, go to insert component, we've got this new CAD Direct feature. So I can literally just from my home screen, hit this CAD Direct, it's going to prompt me, where do you, where's this file you want to pull it in? Um, and as you can see, it's still an NX file. It's not a solid edge file that I've already uh, created um, and converted over. So it's an NX file. You can see a preview here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And almost instantaneously, my NX file is in my assembly. And it already recognizes it as a, as a solid edge file type. So as Dan mentioned, this is an embedded part. So this isn't an NX file transferred over to a solid edge file and then saved somewhere else that you gotta manage. This is embedded as an internal component in the assembly only. Um, and as you can see, it recognized it. It wants me to go ahead and apply some relationships. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And I've already got a little sketch here, just to save a little bit of time. Uh, and you can see it came in. It didn't give me the next step to, to reassociate the direction, but it's uh, easy as just selecting the part. And already I have my, um, my relationship set here. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that. Now it's in a position. I also want to go ahead and unlock the uh, rotation here so I can kind of move it around. So you can see within seconds, I've got an NX part into my, uh, my solid edge assembly here. I can rotate it just like other, um, it acts just as if it was a solid edge part. So this is a really cool um, advantage. Um, and I, I do notice that I, well, let's see, we can just stick with this here. So um, now, like, like I mentioned, so there's, I, now I've got the NX file in here and we're all good. Um, but most of the time there's some good communication between your CAD, CAD team and your CAM team. But um, let's, for, for this sake, let's say that you know, the communication is pretty good between the teams. So I'm able to get the communication, hey, I know you're working on this part. I had to make some last minute changes to the NX file. You need to go ahead and push this through to your, to your solid edge part that you're working on. Well, typically in past, I would probably have to restart this whole thing and probably dump this whole file out, reinsert the new file. But if I go over to um, NX, and just, to, just as a disclaimer, this is actually Cam Pro that I'm doing this in and not NX. So um, Cam Pro, the free feature, does have some CAD uh, type main, or functioning that you can, you can take advantage of. So you can see that this part really doesn't match and that's, that's my fault. So um, let's just take this back real quick. One second, let me, let me go ahead and push the change here. And don't pay attention to what I'm doing. We'll go through this stuff here today. So, anyway, so uh, I'm back in the index, and I'm going to go ahead and make some changes. So my, my assembly pro, uh, profile should have had all of these holes in there. Um, so I've already made some some changes, and I think I have them on file. That's okay. So I'm gonna go to the geometry tab, and you may or may not be familiar with this. Most of you guys are solid edge guys, so you may not uh, recognize this stuff, but I'm just gonna delete some, some simple geometry here. I'm just gonna take care of a couple of these holes. I'm gonna remove a couple of these holes here. Just to show that I'm changing the file here. We'll leave, we'll leave. Let's see. I'll apply that. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this file here. So uh, part of this functionality uh, with the CAD Direct, unfortunately, um, at this time, there is no automatic notification that, hey, this NX file that you're referring to um, has changed. 
So for right now, the, the, kind of the, the common practice or the standard practice would be if you, if you already know that going into it and you're conscious of where your source file is coming from, and there is a good connection, I just get in the habit of every time I open up this file that I know is referring back to NX, I'm going to just go ahead and right click on the part, and I'm going to do an update CAD uh, direct geometry. So you can do that as many times as you need to. And again, I think I, yeah, okay, so, so now we have the match. So now that I have all of the holes in place um, that match back. So I didn't have to reset my, my, I didn't have to rework any of my stuff. I could really just make the change um, in my solid edge file and we're good to go. So just to take that one step further, I'll go ahead and go back to my NX file and I'll get rid of two more pieces of geometry here. So I wanted to get rid of those two uh, pie holes on the top of that face. So again, I'm going to save my file, and I don't. And there's nothing else really required other than the fact that I got to go into my solid edge file and just update that that CAD direct component. You'll see these holes will disappear, and now they're gone. So, so like I said, I, I'm, I, this is really there's not a lot to show here. I mean, it's pretty simple, uh, very easy, yeah, user friendly. I mean, it, it only took me a few minutes to create that. Um, NX migration into Solid Edge with literally no hassle at all. And I even made some changes. They were able to be used downstream. Um, and then just to, just to, um, so you're aware, even though this is a um, internal component, and you can actually see it's it's listed as an internal component at the top here too. I can now utilize this. I can keep this in this in the um, assembly environment, and I can make all the changes that I need going forward. So now this NX file lives in this assembly file for its existence. So I go on and create, you know, this massive fixture, and that part still just lives in there. And I don't have to, I don't have to manage it anywhere else other than right here in this, in this file. And anytime I, I also have some, I can delete it. I can, uh, you know, I can do a few other things with it here. But that's a really cool function um, that I, I kind of really enjoy. That's one of my favorite uh, ones so far. So next, we're going to look at the convergent hybrid modeling a little, a little more in depth. Um, Dan uh, did a really good job of kind of showing the, the uniqueness of the utilizing the two, the two environments, kind of the VREP and the mesh uh, modeling together. Um, and if you've ever worked in any kind of reversed engineering parts or scan parts or mesh parts, you know they have been a headache in the past. So I'm going to just uh, quickly. Um, Hop back into Solid Edge, and we'll look at another. Um, I'm going to look at a different data set here. So, um, I've got this little bracket, um, if you will, and you kind of see it's it's a mesh body. This isn't a Solid Edge part. This is a a mesh body that uh, I'll take it one step further. You can kind of verify. I've done nothing to it. This is just opening up as an STL file that's been scanned um, with with uh, you know a lidar scanner or a perceptron scanner. And I'll talk a little bit more about that with the uh, with the visualization. But um, so you know, typically uh, the workflow would be in the reverse engineering tab. You'd have to go through and you'd have to do some cleanup work uh, to the mesh. Then you'd have to identify the regions. Then you'd have to extract the feed, the, the surfaces. And then you have to stitch all that together in order to get a solid body to, to either add or subtract um, from this part. Um, but as I mentioned, this 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 technology is really great. So I haven't done any conversion at all. This is still just the STL file opened up. Um, in Solid Edge. So I'm going to go ahead and create um, some geometry here real quick. I'm going to just kind of eyeball a, a circle in this center here. Again, this is a little weird for me. But, um, so again, I just created a region. I'm going to use my quick select and I'm going to select that hole. And utilizing the, the synchronous technology, I'm able to quickly identify the hole. I'm going to go ahead and cut this through hole. And very quickly, I've created uh, a hole inside of this uh, mesh body. I didn't have to convert anything. I literally just drew the sketch right on the, on the surface, um, and away I went. And if you notice here, if I do uh, want to show the facets a little better, this is also a new feature within SolidX 2022, is the uh, show facet edges. So I'll highlight that here. You can kind of see what's going on. You can see the, the normal facets here, just the triangular um, surfaces that we typically have. But you can see when I created the circle, We've got all these really tiny triangles that it's, it's used to kind of generate, help me generate that hole in that mesh body. So it's kind of joined the two. That's where the hybrid comes into play. 
Um, so then if I just, uh, you know, want to add a round to this, again, it's no, no problem whatsoever. So I'm able to add a round, and this is really where that hybrid term comes into play. So you can just see I created a, a feature, it's a round, um, but it also is mesh. So this is kind of that hybrid, it's, it's both a mesh and a B-rep uh, piece of material here. So it's, um, you know, pretty, pretty cool. And again, that, this is going to save me a t or you a ton of time. Um, and process improvement is always kind of what I preach on if you listen to any of my um, webinars. Um, Kaizen is kind of, I know small changes really aren't that relevant if you're saving two clicks off of a off of an operation you can do it every day, but if you're doing that same operation 10 times a day, every day, over a year's time, that's about 40 hours of, of actual time that you're saving by just saving those few little clicks here and there. So it does add up in the long run. Um, so any kind of new enhancement that helps me speed up my design process is huge for me. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, create another piece of pro, uh, piece of geometry on this face here. And I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna get that same surface. going to do the opposite here. I just, I just subtracted some material. Now I want to go through and I want to actually add a boss to this, this face. I apologize. I've got several files open here and it's So, any of it, uh, it's not, it's not uh, acting as it should be right now. I've, I've gone through this a million times, but as usual. Um, so I was gonna simply just create a boss there, and then once that boss is created, I can even go and create a chamfer. Um, just kind of visualize so you can kind of see the difference between the mesh and the, and the, the uh, B-Rep material here, or geometry. So another really cool uh, advantage and feature that's gonna save you, again, just a little bit of time up front, but in the long run, it's really gonna help you guys out. So um, I, I know that Prashant uh, kind of shared a little bit with the subdivision modeling. So kind of to high, high level detail, um, some of the enhancements to the subdivision modeling are really groundbreaking. I don't think he covered the newest feature in SolidX 2022 with the um, subdivision modeling, which is the new uh, bridge command. So I'm gonna show that in a little, a little more detail. Um, and then we're gonna also look at the cloud data a little closer. I know that video that was showed uh, was pretty cool. It went by pretty fast. We weren't really sure what was happening. So we'll actually pull that cloud data in and we'll see how we can measure and manipulate um, based on uh, some, some simple gestures. So we'll go ahead and look at the subdivision modeling here. I've got a couple of different examples and they're, um, they're different than what was shown on the video. But um, if you guys are familiar with uh, subdivision modeling, it's a really, really, really cool um, module inside of uh, Solid Edge that it's just a different type of, so you got your ordered modeling, you've got your synchronous modeling, but now this kind of takes it uh, to a whole nother level where you're literally creating geometry, physical geometry, instead of having to create sketches <coughs> and stuff like that. So I'll go ahead and edit this, um, this subdivision part to get me into the subdivision modeling environment. You can see all of my tools are just specific to um, uh, to the subdivision model. So what we're gonna look at first is this new bridge command. And essentially what this does is it's gonna create um, geometry using faces so I can add one body of geometry to another with just one click, well actually two clicks, but uh, we'll check this out real quick. Um, so basically this is gonna, any cage in here you're able to select and use it as your reference to, to start moving some stuff around. So I'm gonna just walk through a couple of these real quick and make a couple little pieces of geometry that you can see here. 
Now, if you notice when I when I did that, you may or may not have noticed that there was a, a green profile or a green dotted line kind of showing me the, the vertex of the of the mapping. So I'll get into a little bit more detail on that, and I'm also going to lower the segments here. Um, so the more segments you have, uh, the more control you have over kind of the output of the of the geometry. As you can see I've just got one segment in now, but if I increase it, then I'm getting more of those facets or groups that I can I can pull from. But we'll bring it back to let's do two for now. Accept that. Uh, so you can see what it did. So it created this joining bridge between the two surfaces, and I didn't have to create a sketch to do that. I didn't have to create a sketch and then go into the extrude and extrude that, um, tell it a distance, or you know, I just it literally just with one or two clicks, I'm able to create some cool geometry. Um, so I'll go through and I'll, I'll create a couple more of these, and I'll, I'll go in a little closer in regards to the, the vertex I was mentioning. So if you look a little closer when I go to grab this this box here, this cage, you can see that there's this circle, this. Point, this vertex point um, is highlighted and the closer I get to each corner you can see it's kind of moving based on my input of my mouse so what's important here so if I select this front the bottom cage with the front profile of it and accept that and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to select the back side of this front page you can see I'm getting that preview here it's kind of showing me what it's going to what it's going to do but I'll go ahead and select it and then you'll be able to see a little closer what happened here. So what happened is that it actually created a twist in there. So the vertex from one corner up to the other, it's twisting that, that geometry as it, as it generates it. So you have, you have control to create either just a straight piece of geometry using your vertex from, point, from the same corner to the, the appropriate majority corner, or you can kind of play around with it to get some, some, some screw um, out of it or a little twist, uh, which is pretty cool. So it's just giving you a little bit more control um, over what you're able to do. So I can go through, I, I can literally play in this up all day, so I gotta make sure I stay, <laughs> stay on point here, but I'll create a couple more uh, profiles just so you can kind of see how this works, and I'll take a little deeper here. It's starting to take shape. I, I don't know what you would, what this is. Um, I'm kind of just you know making whatever looks cool right now, but it, you know it could be anything. So uh, another benefit to this command is that not only can I bridge you know two two pieces together, but I can also intersect these bridges. So I'm going to create um, a bridge across the top here. And again, Solid Edge has always given me you know some great previews before I select and finalize what move I'm trying to do. Um, so I created one uh, cross member across here, and I actually want to come across this way, um, and we'll see, you know, how that how that is, how that acts. So I'll select this one, and come across, and take this one. So you can see what it did is it actually joined uh, and intersected that existing uh, bridge and intersected through the other side, uh, which I mean is really cool. I mean, it, typically if you were just doing a standard order. Um, extrusion, you might get some complications if you're going all the way through that with the other feature. So, um, in, in my opinion, this is really cool. This is almost as close as you can get to playing with Play Doh, but not getting your hands all dirty. So, I got a couple more, um, a couple more uh, examples of this that I can show. And I think this is similar to one of the previews that Rashawn touched on, but we're going to use uh, this bridge command to also integrate and, and utilize this curve here. So I'm going to uh, quickly go in to edit my subdivision model. Again, this, this uh, process is a little different if the, if the model was created in synchronous versus order. I'm going to show you both. So this is the synchronous um, uh, way to get into the, uh, the subdivision model. But once you're in there, all the features are the same, whether you're in synchronous or all the, all the same commands exist. So I'm going to create a couple quick cages here. And again, being mindful of where that vertices is going before I accept it, make sure that it's giving me the result that I need. Were these free bodies in a part, or were these uh, is this an assembly that you're? Uh, no, this is not an assembly. This is a part with just three bodies inside. Yeah. So again, this could have been something that was scanned in or um, just created as, as a separate body. So you can see it's pretty, I mean, I'm literally just, there's really no effort at all here for me to create some really wild looking 
the designs here. Again, always just kind of being mindful where that vertices is, is going so I don't get some uh, strange uh, result. But, you know, in 30 seconds I was able to create that, that piece of geometry and it's, it doesn't look, you know, it's symmetrical. Um, you know, very effortlessly. So let's go ahead and create um, one more bridge at the bottom here so we can see how we can take advantage of this uh, 3D line. Can oh. we just drew that line on a plane? Yeah, this, just, this is just a 3D sketch. So there's no plane involved. Like, I literally just connected point to point and that was it. Now it is one thing that, it's one important thing here, at least with this part. Um, I had a little bit of trouble in the beginning, but um, as long as when we're applying the bridge command, again, back to that vertices and the importance of its location, if I were to select it over here, I would get an error. So the vertices of the cage um, that you're creating, you're, you're building that bridge from, has to meet the, the 3D sketch at some point. So, so now here's where it kind of goes into the second step. So once I accept this, I now have the ability to, to grab that shape or that curve. So now it's asking me, well, what, what do you want to select? So I'm going to select this 3D geometry here. And you can see it pulled that, that bottom bridge down. Now if I look at the front view, it's not that impressive. But I only have two segments. So as I mentioned before, the more segments you have, the more control you have over the, over the geometry. So if I extend this, and raise these segments up, you can see that it's getting a better contour and really matching that, that profile. So again, it, it's all kind of based on what you're really looking for out of the model, but you have a lot of controls in here to give you a very basic shape or a more complex uh, piece of geometry. You know, this is, I don't know what, again, I don't know what part this is, but it looks pretty cool. Um, so again, this subdivision modeling is really, really cool, and it just, it just every year it gets better. And I think this is only the second year this has out. Um, so they're, they're already creating what was already possible even, even cooler. And I, I think that Pixar also uses this modeling um, software to create a lot of their, um, their characters and their, their framework for their model. So um, I know we just saw this is, again, this is another um, subdivision um, model here. And again, this one's in synchronous, so this, I'm just going to select my subdivision model and get into the subdivision, subdivision environment. So we saw I was create, using the bridge command to create geometry, I'm creating bridges, I'm creating things. Um, but it's not only just to, to build upon or add. Um, we can also use that same bridge command. Um, we'll see here in a moment. To cut material out. So I used that same bridge command to cut a hole in that part. So I didn't have to go through and create a torus and then take that and, and, ex, and subtract it out. So this is a really powerful um, command, in my opinion. I, I would probably use this bridge quite a bit while creating some really cool models. Um, and I also showed kind of how to bridge one surface to another or one vertices to another. And another really cool advantage is that we can actually have an open-ended bridge. So I'm going to use this sketch here that, that you see, and I'm going to actually create a bridge using that piece of geometry, that sketch. And again, I'm going to make sure my vertices is at I'll just take it to the max. And you see it's a really clean curve. There's really no breaks in it, um, at least at this view. So another really, really cool um, feature, and I, I can't talk enough about this bridge command within uh, subdivision modeling. I don't know how many people actually use this software, or this module within the software, but it's really, really cool. I would encourage all of you guys to play around with it in your free time. And if you, if you saw the presentation from the SOLIDIF 2021 um, presentation for what's new, this was the, the subdivision modeling data set they used for that, which was a pretty cool presentation. Um, so next I'll hit on the, the point cloud visualization. Um, and so really all I can say about it is if, if you do any kind of reverse engineering, um, you'll, you'll know all about cloud data. And Solid Edge is not really struggle, but it's had very limited control as to what type of cloud data you can pull into this to the software. And with this release, it's getting more, even more expanded. So we'll go ahead and look at this a little closer. And I'm going to use the same data set that was shown in the uh, in the first presentation, but 
uh, I'll kind of just take it a little slower and kind of show you what I got here. So again, you know, I'm working on a project where I had to go out into the into the field, into a warehouse. I had to make some measurements, and I had to take some pictures, and then luckily I had a scanner at my disposal, so I scanned this whole place um, before I started on the prototype. So you know, if, if you've ever done any kind of reverse engineering stuff like that, you know, when you do your reverse engineering, you want to be able to simulate what you're designing in the real world. Sometimes you can't always hop on a plane and go to Utah and, and measure it again just to make sure it was right. Maybe you missed a, a dimension or something or missed the silver. Um, so again, I opened up in um, uh, assembly mode or assembly preview mode, and I'll discuss that here next, but just ignore that for now. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this file. And it loads, it may take a minute or so, but I think I should have already loaded this one, so it should take just a moment here. Um, I'm pretty sure that the subdivision modeling is available in the premium, in the solid edge premium, but I'll have to, I'll have uh, Justin from the sales guys confirm that. But I think it might be just available in the premium, but I might be wrong. Okay, so now I'm in, I, I, sorry, I got distracted, I didn't see how long it took, but in, in only a couple of seconds to, to open that up. So um, if I go over to my tools um, tab here, I've got this reference point cloud uh, command that I can select. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up, and when this opens up, you'll see that I've got this factory uh, points um, scan, and I've done nothing else. This is directly from the scanning software itself. I, have, I didn't have to bring this in a solid edge and do some magic to it. I just wanna pull that file directly in. Um, and this is actually a PTS file, so this came from, uh, I, I don't remember PTS, what software that comes from, but um, I do know that there are several new enhancements here, so we now have access to ACS scan data, PTS scan data, uh, XYZ, I think two of these are actually Autodesk um, file extensions. And the PLY I think is uh, Poly, it's a free scanning software, and ironically enough, if you have an iPhone 13, it has a LiDAR camera, and you can actually scan 3D data with your phone. I've done it several times, and it's really, really cool. Um, the, the free uh, module for it, it, it's very limited, but if you want to export those out into um, STLs or other types of formats, you have that ability with uh, you know, just a small, a small fee. But for now, we're gonna stick to this PTS file, and I think as Dan mentioned, um, that this data set is actually, I think it's 30 or 300 million points. So this is a massive, massive, massive um, scan here. And immediately when I select that file, I get a couple of more um, checkers just to make sure you're sure this is, you know, you got some further controls and control how that's going to come in. So I want to highlight real quick just the options here. So that's the first ad, and they always, options are always the first thing you want to look at. Um, and by default, these three are selected, and, by, and ironically, these are all three that I want every time. So I, I, I don't mess with this at all, but essentially what they are is I can zoom uh, the point cloud data when it's displayed. So when I have it pulled in and I zoom my model in and out, that point cloud data is also moving along with it. So I have the control to move it all at one time. And then to display the steering wheel to move the point cloud data once it's been brought in. And if you ever, if you have any experience with point cloud data, you know that usually when you import it into Solid Edge or any other software, it's probably gonna come out in space somewhere. So you're gonna wanna be able to reposition that and not have to go to a couple of clicks to move it. So as soon as that point cloud data comes in, I wanna have the control start moving it right then and there. And then finally, this save uh, display data for fast open. Now this is probably the most important one. And again, I mentioned this was 30 million or 300 million points to a huge file. The first time I pulled this in, it was probably five minutes before it, I went, got a water came back and it was still cranking. Um, so what this does is the first time that you bring that scan data in, it's going to save it into the, in the dip, on the disk. So if this is checked, every time you open this file up subsequently after that, it's gonna open right up as you'll see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up, okay, I want all these options to be set. And then density, I have some controls here as well. So I can, I can have it at maximum density or I can also have it size and I can select those. Once I pull the cloud data in, I'll kind of show you what those are. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna just say I want medium density and I want the size just to be automatic. I'm gonna hit the green tick here. Take me a minute or so, I'm sorry, a few seconds or so. And now there's 30 million uh, points in my assembly data you can see I'm rotating this around, I'm zooming in and out, and this laptop is not the greatest laptop. So this is all just on my hard drive. Um, and you can see this is pretty massive. I mean, the amount of detail in this scan is impressive. I mean, I'm seeing reflections from surfaces, um, all kinds of really cool stuff. But 
Beside the fact, I, I, I you know, get a little excited about these things, but let's go ahead and say, okay, this is the scan that I need. I'm, I'm, I'm good here, so I'm going to hit finish. And again, I have that selected to be able to move it as soon as I'm <coughs> placing it. So I'm going to get a little bit more precise here, and I'm going to move and look at the top view. I'm going to move my cursor to the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move the point cloud data because it's easier for me to move the point cloud data than it is to move the assembly around to the point cloud data. So you'll see uh, real quick how simple this is. So I've got it basically on the floor of the scan data. And I want to move the floor up to about the floor setting of, of my assembly. And again, I'm still in the move command, so I can go to the top view now, reposition it a little better for my, for my need. I want to try to get this out in front. That. So if you click out of the move command, it disappears, but that's okay. So if I just go to my expand my point cloud and right click, I can reposition and it gives me the handlebar right back. So we go ahead and move this so that my machine is basically in the front of my of my scan. And that's about where I want it. I probably actually want to shift it over to the left. Just So now, now you know. So I've, I've spent a lot of time designing this prototype for this um, for this facility or for this project, and now is really the the crunch time. I want to make sure that all the time and effort I spent in this design is actually going to work before it's ever shipped and, and installed on the floor, which is going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars if I have to make on the fly changes to this machinery on the floor. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take advantage of having this real world environment at my disposal. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I also have access to um, some of my configurations here. Uh, okay. So let me just uh, do the hard way here. Go ahead and show this. I'm going to show my team <coughs> that configuration that you can save. So let's see what is it. There we go. So as we can see, so I designed this in place, uh, yet my tank is definitely not in a position where I need it to be. Um, so again, I can take advantage of this synchronous technology. I'm just going to go ahead and just click on the tank. I'm going to relocate the position. And it's somewhat a little closer. Some of this, some of this equipment may be uh, being decommissioned at the time this is installed. So I just want to get it in somewhat of a clear uh, location here. And then I'm going to go ahead and activate my my pipe here. So I've also got a pipe. So if I look at this in the front view, oh man, I can see I definitely have a problem with my pipe. There's some interference with this garage door, wall door, whatever this may be. Um, so I need to make a, I need to make a last minute change to my design. So one really cool thing is if I go to my inspect tab, I can actually measure not only the part, but I can actually measure the point cloud data as well, which I think is huge. Um, not only are you just able to look at this point cloud data, but you're also able to reference it as well. So let me go ahead and make a couple of quick snaps here and make a measurement. Okay, this is not, this is not precise, but you get the idea. So I can I can scan not only the or measure not only the point cloud data, but also the geometry inside there. So I know uh, I've got a I've got a discrepancy of about 280 millimeters. I probably need to make a change to this this cable or I'm sorry this pipe. So let me go at sketch here. I'm going to make a quick change. I'm going to just change this 1200 here to 850 so I know I have plenty of clearance. There's a sketch. And you can see just like that I was able to quickly and easily make my changes here in the real world environment. If had I not had access to that cloud data, I would have sent this thing to the floor. It would have got manufactured. It would have got shipped. It how God knows how much money it would have cost to ship this equipment. The installers will put it in place, and then they find out there's a problem. That's going to be a premium. They're going to be working overnight to get this done, and that's thousands of dollars I potentially saved by using this cloud data as reference. So really cool, really powerful, um, easy to use stuff. And in combination with the synchronous technology and, and other tools, this is this is a big game changer, I think, as well. So next to the large assembly performance, I know I kind of showed it uh, prematurely, and I think Dan and Prashant both kind of talked about this a little bit. But I'll, I'll kind of explain it in a little bit more detail uh, briefly. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a new file here. But I want you to know that um, I'm going to go into the settings first. So let's go into the global solid settings. 
And I want you to see this new um, area. So if I go to the save assembly of OpenAS. So if you're familiar with the large assembly performance and how, how Solid Edge handles opening large assembly files, you should already kind of be familiar with this tab. Um, but note that there's this new feature here, um, open assembly preview in large assemblies. So basically this is going to determine based on these features, whether it's a small assembly, large assembly, or medium assembly, and the, and the configurations that you have set up, every time it opens up this file, let's for, for say for instance, any, a large file is anything over a thousand parts in this default setting I have here. If, if I open up that file, it's already gonna read, okay, there's more than a thousand parts here, we're gonna automatically put you into um, open preview mode. So that means I'm gonna be able to open it up, I'm gonna be able to look at it, rotate it around, change some configurations, but I can't do anything with the model. It's just there for me to look at, which is fine sometimes. Sometimes I just wanna open the model and look at it and not really do much to it. Um, so this is a global setting. So if you have this selected, it's gonna act this way for every model that you open up. So I'm gonna have it selected now. I just, I just wanna show you real quick, just to save me some resources. And I'm gonna open up a new file. And I'm gonna select this large assembly performance. So not only is that a global setting and I have it selected for everything, but let's just say for instance, I, I know that I have it selected. I'm really quickly opening up a file. I also have this new addition here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's the open assembly preview mode toggle. So even though it's a global setting, I can still change it per file if I need to. So I'm gonna leave that just so you can kind of see uh, what's happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this same assembly that we just used in the the previous demonstration, and you can already see, so I've, I've already got limited controls up here in my ribbon. I, I've only got a few commands that I can do. Uh, and again, that's all I want. If I'm just looking at this model, everything loads in. I've got everything in here. There's more than a thousand parts here. Um, and if you notice, um, I don't know if you can let's see, I don't have access to, okay, here it is. So by default, it also applies the large assembly performance mode. So if you guys aren't using this and you deal with any kind of larger assemblies, you gotta be taking advantage of this large assembly performance mode. Um, it's really, it's, it's groundbreaking. It's one of the inclusions that started in, I think Solid Edge 2020, and not a lot of customers have known about it. I'm surprised that when we get uh, tech support questions about, man, I got this large model open, I'm moving it around, it's just so slow. Well, do you know about the large uh, large performance assembly mode? You know, what's that? So I quickly go to them and immediately like, oh man, this is a game changer. Now I, I don't have to reboot my computer every time it starts to lag around. So again, so I have I have this, you know, pretty, it's not a large in size, but there's a lot of parts in this. There's a lot of controls and stuff in these boxes here. And I'm able to, again, this is the greatest laptop, but. Um, so again, I can I can change a couple of things here as far as views are concerned. I can rotate it around, I can do all that cool stuff. But let's just say, okay, um, I don't know if my configurations are here on this. No. So I don't have any configurations here. But if I just wanted to look at any of these, in, Specifically, I can turn all of these on and just look at the one specific thing that I want to see in greater detail. And here's the box I'm going to look at. And that's great. Um, this is what I'm working on. But now I've got to make some changes to it. So how do I do that? So I can just simply click Edit Assembly Mode, and that's going to take me right in. It's going to load everything that I have loaded up here. Um, but I also have this drop down here, and I have Edit Assembly with Options. So I want to see what options do I have. So this is where it's going to. I can define how these options are going to kind of play out. So I can select the small assembly um, and how I have that um, configured to open up, or I can pick medium or large. And then the last save is kind of important. So if you have, if I go back to the settings real quick, there was one more tick that I don't think I, I talked about. Yeah, so this, um, okay, so this is gonna automatically retain that last save configuration. So now I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and I have this, this last saved selected. And what I'm gonna do is when I open this up, it's gonna take me to where I had this model in the last state that it was saved in. So I didn't, I didn't have to save this as a brand new file that, for this one. Um, so it opened it up as the file that I just had opened. Um, but if I wanted to go back and, you know, I want to make some changes, I want to load a couple of other ones here. And then I save this file. So eventually, when I save this file, whatever configuration, if I have other configurations open, um, when I save that file and when I go to open it back up, it's just going to open up the standard um, view set. But if I go back and select that with open with options, I can then select the last save. So I'm the only person working on this. I know that 
you know, one of my guys opened up the file and he had the whole thing and he actually saved it, that's okay. Um, but it's, it's, it's saved to your own specific um, utility, I guess, in, in your options. So you, as you know, those options, unless you have IT control, every option you change in your account, it doesn't affect your, your buddies down, down the hall. Um, so that's essentially a uh, large, large assembly preview mode. Uh, and then how you can make adjustments to that afterwards. So kind of in summary, you know, we saw some really awesome new features with the, with the core, uh, core modeling aspects. And again, there's so much to cover here. It would probably take a week to really go in depth to all the cool stuff, but we're kind of just hitting high level, a little bit more detail. And there was so much keeping with the, just the core CAD stuff that Pratik, my um, counterpart, will be sharing a little bit of that um, here shortly. Uh, but we kind of saw, you know, just as a summary, we saw how that CAD Direct is really a game changer if you're working with external models um, and files. We also looked at how to leverage those BREP and uh, mesh geometries in the same uh, model with the convergent hybrid modeling, which was another big game changer in my opinion. And then we kind of saw all the different options as far as the subdivision modeling and that new bridge uh, feature uh, and how we can now select that bridge to, to control some geometry um, if we want. Then we saw the full color visualization of the, the cloud point data. Uh, and again, I could just talk all day about all these cool things. Um, and then finally, we saw how Siemens, is com their commitment to solving that, how do we deal with these large assembly files? I mean, that seems to be probably the number one, if not number two, biggest complaint or, or report we get is how, we're just having so much trouble dealing with these large assemblies because it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. So Siemens has invested a lot of money in really solving this problem or doing the best they can to solve it. And every year we're seeing huge improvements. Last year with the large assembly performance, this year with the um, with the large assembly preview mode. So a lot of really, really cool stuff and I wish I could spend days on this stuff. But um, as far as that, I'll take any questions that you guys may have. I know we got a break coming up in a few minutes. So any questions? What was that app that you were using? Uh, which app? You mentioned an app for the iPhone. Oh, um, Polycam. 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 And it's available, and like I said, it's I, all iPhone 13s and even the iPad Pro has LiDAR camera built into it, LiDAR scanner. So you can, and it's impressive. It kind of blew me away. I wasn't expecting much out of it, and I was pretty impressed. Any other questions? I got a little. Sure. Um, with the direct importing, um, where you take uh, other software models and, and put them directly in solid edge assemblies, how does that handle step files that were already translated from another software? Does that still have to be retranslated back into Solid Edge? Uh, Brandon, I'll have, to, I'll have to test that, but I, I think that it should handle it uh, the same way as if it hadn't been translated at all. Because um, if, if you try to translate it, and if you've only got, you know, so somebody had a question about translation before, maybe a SolidWorks part, and you've gone through the translation and it doesn't work properly, I would try to take it, I would test that uh, CAD Direct, and I'll test it for you before the end of the day and let you know how that works. I don't know if you have access to that file or not, but I can test it in 2022 and see how it works. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon.